Oh, hello there. My name's Bowser. This is a wargaming creation. Okay, so my thinking was um, an oldie worldy style tavern house uh, type building, three floors. The first floor would probably be like a, uh, uh, a brickwork um, foundation and the next two floors would be uh, wooden frame Tudor beamed with a couple of windows uh, and a nice rickety tiled roof uh, with a nice tall chimney stack coming out of it. Maybe a bit of uh, base detail as well. And here you can see the beginnings of our foundation. So this is the ground floor. It's made out of uh, regular um, foam core and those are the measurements, roughly about, what was it, uh, eight centimeters by eight centimeters squared, just for reference. Um, three centimeter tall door, uh, similar um, foundations for the um, top floor as well, um, except slightly larger, because it's gonna uh, stick out above the ground floor. That seemed to be the, the fashion or the theme for these oldie worldie buildings. Each successive floor would be larger than the last. The um, a ground floor, the, the basement if you like, is going to be made out of blue foam. Um, I finally managed to pick some up uh, off eBay after looking around for ages for this stuff. Uh, not easy to come by in the UK, I don't know, I never see them in DIY stores like you're supposed to, but that's just me. Anyhow, uh, building out the foundation, they're just going to be uh, I think 8x8 eight eight blocks, uh, measuring that out there. and I uh, can't remember what those notches were for, I think it might be for the, the doorway. Uh, the stairs will also be made out of blue foam, so you see in the diagram there the stairs leading up to the first floor, the main entranceway. Uh, that will also be out of um, this blue foam stuff. Cutting blue foam, really easy. I didn't realise how malleable this stuff was. It was my first time working with it, but it's absolutely amazing if you can get hold of it for any sort of modelling work, um, then I suggest you do. Um, it does blunt your knife eventually, so just make sure you're using a cheap knife like I'm using here and uh, measure twice, cut once. So here I'm just cutting down the, um, the four walls, taking into consideration the thickness of the, uh, the foam in the first place. And you can see as we add the successive layers on top, they get wider and wider, forming a nice um, uh, sort of inverted Russian doll style uh, foundation for the building. Uh, just scoring in the uh, the door here, so we're going to have a door on the ground floor. Um, saw a really good uh, tip from another uh, YouTube channel, can't remember the name of it unfortunately, but I uh, found that this would probably be the best way of creating indentations into your uh, um, into your blue foam. So if we want to create a uh, recess for the door, we kind of slice back into the depth of the, uh, the, um, the foam and then get right up in there, make sure it meets the, um, goes deep enough so that it meets the top of the door frame. So keep going deep, deep, deep into there. And then we'll be able to um, slice the door out with a couple of uh, couple of cuts and it'll look really effective. The, uh, the cuts to the side won't really show if you go wider than the actual frame itself. You'll see what I mean when, uh, when that comes out. You might have to do a bit of sanding or um, a bit of extra cut work once that comes out, but uh, for the most part, it's an easy job. There we go. Um, so yeah, just a bit of clean up work, but um, fairly easy to do. Always keep your offcuts. You don't know when you're going to come across them uh, or need them in the future. Um, I built in um, a little uh, cellar um, grate, if you like, um, in the base of the uh, foam, foam building, uh, they've got the ground floor. So we're just going to cut out a little um, circular notch there. Um, I think in the original design, I planned to have it on the floor above, um, or no, sorry, in the uh, foam core building, um, in the the, uh, the structure you'd, so you've seen before, and out of that black card stuff, I think I'd had a similar little um, recess, but I decided it wouldn't make sense to have it on the first floor. It makes far more sense to have it on the ground floor. Um, I think it was an error in judgment on my side, so I've decided to move that down to the ground floor, so that's what I'm doing here. Same f um, process as creating the door, just adding that in and uh, and notching it out. I'm going to have a little grill uh, across the front of here made out of, I don't know, matchsticks or um, uh, uh, maybe a bit of plastic rod. I think there's some in the background you can see there. 
uh, that I'll be using to create the the, um, the bars for the cellar. Here it is, uh, your best friend, the elastic band at this point, uh, just PVA'd up. It doesn't matter, it looks a bit rough and ready. Um, it's all going to come together nicely, as you'll see later on. And again, just to give you an idea of how this is all going to sit together and, uh, um, and marry up with the diagram, the rough sketch that we did on the right hand side there. You know, not exactly as we drew it, but very much the, the same. It's a good idea to have a plan before you embark on any of these uh, little uh, projects, even if it is just a rough guide. Good to dry fit it as well, just take, check your measurements, make sure there's nothing weird um, that you haven't considered when you're putting it together. And then just a scale, uh, just a Skaven uh, wall or D type guy here I've got here. He's on a mounted base, he's a bit taller than normal, so maybe not the best uh, example of scale, but it's just to prove that he'd fit nicely inside the door, uh, should you wish to. Um, can't remember what I'm doing here. Uh, oh, this is the stairs, yeah. So, um, as mentioned, we're going to um, create a, f um, a styrofoam or a blue foam stairwell up to the, uh, the first floor from the ground floor and that's what I'm measuring out here so just trying to get an idea of the um, the, uh, the first the porchy bit of the, um, the the patio bit of the stairs that will then lead down to the, the stairs proper fairly simple design we're just going to chop that out and keep our off cuts because again they're going to be particularly useful uh, for other projects or additions to this project, usually things like rubble or uh, window sills, um, odd shaped blocks that you might want to add to the uh, the rest of the building. I don't think I actually used any of mine, uh, any of the offcuts in my building. Uh, actually I may have done for the chimney, um, but they will be used in other projects, fear not. So just tidying that up, dry fitting it again, just to make sure it all fits up nicely. A couple of spares, keep those done. And uh, sorry about the flickering on the video as well. I don't know. I'm using my iPhone to, to record this. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'll see if I can get rid of it in later uh, recordings. So the next thing are the windows. And this could be considered the most time-consuming part of the project. Everything else is pretty quick to actually whack together. But the windows, depending on how detailed you want to be with them, can take a bit of time. Just because they're a real faff to paint after they're done. Now, I've considered a couple of ways of doing this. i considered maybe... Uh, casting my own so I just glue them on the front without a recess built in. Um, I've considered painting them um, and uh, before they go onto the wall because again it's quite a difficult thing to, to paint accurately once you've got all the other um, well once they're recessed into the, into the wall that you see here. It's a bit difficult so go with your own approach uh, whatever you feel comfortable with but um, I am going to um, pre cut the um, the holes in the foam core and then I'm going to more or less eyeball the um, the size of the frame which I'm then going to add into balsa wood so you kind of get a lip effect coming out of the um, uh, the recess so you can see me applying a bit of balsa wood there not real measuring just eyeballing it uh, just holding up a piece of balsa wood uh, to the width of the window seeing what length it should be cutting it off um, just be careful not to let the wood splinter, that's the only thing I would say. So use a nice sharp knife, cut towards the grain where you can, uh, rather than across, because across does uh, splinter usually. But using a nice sharp knife and um, and scoring through that patiently gives the best edge on those things. You don't really want splintered edges, it doesn't look as good. Um, so we're just adjusting, so just using normal PVA there on the, on the frame just to um, get it in there. It's a little bit wonky, so just dry fit it move it around, you've got plenty of time to work with uh, with PVA so it's not a problem. Uh, you can see me cutting through there, just tidying it up a little bit, popping it in, that's the process of creating the windows. As long as you've got that nice lip effect which will become a little bit more obvious and a bit more um, I guess uh, announced when we paint it. Um, it's, it's just worth taking the time to get those windows right I think they're one of the key features and make your building stand out from the rest. Here's one that I pre-designed earlier just to give me an idea of how I might want to work it. Um, I didn't use it in the end as you can see, but I very much used the design. And here we are... what are we doing? Oh yeah, we're building out the... Um, what would you call it? The Not the extension, but a, a protrusion from the building to give it a bit more character, a bit more depth. Um, using an offcut actually, there we go, we did use them. 
and it's just foam core. We're going to put it on the side, you can see, because we've got different widths of the building or sizes of the building as we got the floors. Uh, we've got to take that into account when we cut the blue core, uh, the foam core. Uh, sorry, the blue foam. So we're just going to build out the rough shape of that and then build in the um, uh, the the notches, if you like, into the back of it so it sits flush against the rest, rest of the building. Uh, this is supposed to look like it's part of the main building, uh, all considered. Um, and you can see if we just glued it slap bang on the side there, it's not really going to work. So we need to cut some notches into that blue foam to make it fit, um, sit flush against the, the rest of the building. So that's what we're doing here. Measure that in, it's half a centimetre. Foam core um, is generally about half a centimetre thick, unless you're getting thicker ones, but that's generally the measurements that I use, the best one to work with, I find. Um, I'm just going to pop that in there, and that should fit nice and snug with the floor above. I don't want it going the full length of that, so I'm going to trim it down um, so it's a little bit shorter, sort of meets waist height on the um, first floor to give the idea of like a bay window, uh, sorry, the ground floor like a bay window um, for the, uh, the first floor. You can see also that I've cut three extra windows into the um, that floor as well. Um, it's a good idea just to have windows in every floor, it's a bit more realistic than not having windows. Um, there wasn't much electricity in those days as I'm sure you could appreciate apart from um, weird mysterious magical warp fires and the like so we're very much going to be going along the theme of having natural light flooding our, our buildings uh, where possible. Um, it just makes it a little bit more realistic and a bit more detail. Uh, you don't really want too many big, flat, boring surfaces on the sides of uh, your buildings because they're dull. So here, yeah, dry fading in. We're using the same technique to uh, build those windows into the extension, as you can see there, exactly the same as we did with the door. And um, we're going to add a, again a further uh, extension on the other side, just a window frame, um, to give a, again a bit more depth. So I've pre-built the frame, as I suggested I might in the previous video, given it a bit of detail just by giving it um, a different uh, look by ch cutting down the um, uh, the balsa uh, edges to give it a, a slanted effect, hexagonal effect, I guess. And we're just going to pop that on the side. Uh, uh, before doing that we're going to pop the door on. So the door is going to be pretty simple to make. I've got an example here that was um, sort of rough fitting together. It's based on um, balsa wood backed onto either cardboard or plastic card. It's plastic card here and then some additional plastic card details just to make it come alive. Um, they're coffee stirrers uh, actually that I've used for the wood. It's a nice consistent length, they're nice to, and easy to work with and I've got a billion of them so it's just a nice way of using them up. Uh, they work really well with the um, the doors as well. They've got a nice amount of wood grain in them, so when you dry brush them later, uh, they'll sort of pick out the, the wood effect. So they look nice. Um, they do fire off when you cut them with clippers, so do make sure you hold on to those or you'll have someone's eye out. Just trimming down the edge there so that you don't end up with the door too thick. That on. And the in the background there, you can see the other door. Um, very simple to make those extra details, if a little fiddly. Um, but if you've got the patience and dexterous fingers, you can very easily make little door knobs and knockers and things like that for um, for your doors. Everyone likes knobs and knockers, so whack them in where you can. Here you can see I'm using this uh, grating stuff. Uh, that would go off eBay. I think if you search metal grating, uh, I think it comes sometimes under um, car, what's it called, like car grill grating or something similar. Um, it's very cheap, probably a quid or two for an A4 sheet and it will last you quite a while as you can see here. Worth getting though. Uh, you can use it for sci-fi projects for flooring and stuff like that as well. And it's got a nice lattice effect that will look really good in windows. Um, we're just going to back it onto some cardboard and then push into the window. And you can see why it's going to be a bit difficult to paint later on, so painting that, uh, I guess the, the glass aspect of the window, the back bit of the window, um, without getting the paint over the um, the lead grill in front of it, it's going to be quite difficult. Uh, but we'll dry brush the, um, uh, the lattice effect later. There's the door stuck in, um, that hole underneath the, um, the extension that I talked about we're going to have to fill in. Um, 
place the uh, cellar grate onto the ground floor instead. There we are, starting to come together, starting to look like the drawing a little bit. Uh, this didn't take very long at all, maybe a couple of hours. And that's mostly just glue drying time. Um, so as long as you've got a plan, uh, you can rough cut this stuff out very quickly. Might be an idea to maybe even build a couple at a time, just because the um, the drying is where the uh, where the real time gets sunk into the glue drying. The PVA is not the quickest glue to dry in the world. I wouldn't really recommend using a glue gun, or at least the one I've got. It just dries thick, and it means that you have surfaces that are uneven, like they, they won't join smooth and flush like you see here. You'd have they'd be raised away from the surface, and they just don't have a nice fit. Um, so that's all dried now, and that's the extension on the other side of the window looking good. I've framed that again with a bit more balsa. And now the fun bit. So the roof, very simple. Just measure the length that you need for both sides of the roof. Create an apex, fold it in half. And then I've actually intentionally cut my roof to be quite slanted, so it's going to have that sort of fantasy slant effect that you see in films and old, old hammer style buildings. Um, John Blanche art's really good for um, giving you an idea of what sort of theme you're going for there. I'm going to trim that down so it won't look as comical like a silly hat on the house. Uh, we'll c c trim down the uh, sides of that so it'll look nice. And the chimney. So a chimney, I thought how am I going to measure this out, but it actually became really obvious how to do this. Um, I just decided whereabouts I wanted it. I think I was going to have it in the middle of the roof or on the top. I could have had it on the top, but I think it might have looked a bit tall, a bit silly, a bit like a central feature. I wanted it to be a bit less considered, just rickety on the side, hanging off, maybe not even that straight. So measuring up is actually really easy. Just put the house on its um, side and draw the line of the, uh, the, the gradient of the roof against it, which you see here. Just make sure the, um, the um, chimney is relatively straight or as straight as you want it done easy got a bit of curve in there which is going to cut it off and it'll sit nicely on the roof so i've started i've glued down the roof though as you can see uh, we're going to tile that later but now we're adding in the tudor beams i don't know what they're really called um structural beams i guess there is a pattern uh, a, a, a very considered pattern you should adhere to um really to, to make these look realistic they tend to sit if you look at old photos of uh, tudor buildings they um, they, they obviously form the structure, the integrity of the, the building. Now I've done it, I've cheated a little bit, I've put um, balsa over the corners of the foam core building where there is exposed foam just because it covers up that nasty rough foam effect you get from the edge of the um, foam core. So I'm cheating and just using that um, as an excuse to um, build corner pieces over, over that. And you can see here I'm just building out the additional uh, horizontal beams uh, just using balsa wood. Typically they would appear under main structural items like doors, windows, um, above doors, above windows and then sometimes you get those diagonal cross ones as well. Then you can start having a bit of fun with it as well once you've got the main um, uh, uh, structure down including some window sills there you can see. You can maybe start um, having an entire floor of wood beam and get those important cross, um, cross uh, diagonal cross beams in there as well. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the way that turned out. Um, if I was going to redo something, I would redo those window frames at the top there you can see, um, just because they were annoying me. They didn't stick out as much as the Tudor beams did, so I might go back and sort that another time. Um, here you can see me actually building in the brickwork for the uh, foam core, not foam core, sorry, the blue foam um, uh, foundation. So just using a nice sharp pencil, you can just score it in. It's so nice to work with and has such a good effect once it's painted up. Um, again, it's my first time using this stuff and um, I was really pleased. I've seen channels, um, other YouTube channels out there giving you an idea of how to uh, do this nice and realistically. They suggest using um, a rock from your garden, something with a lot of texture and then sort of denting your, uh, your blue foam with it to give it a nice sort of um, imperfect rough effect that you can see here a little bit so I just use my finger because I'm lazy and you can see just building in that different depth into the bricks just by pressing them in or pinching them scuffing them um, gives a nice irregular effect Let's pay special attention to the corners um, and you can see there the little um, keystone archway there um, for the cellar 
Um, yes, pay special attention to the corners, round those off, round off all the corners. These are old buildings, they wouldn't have the nice sharp corners you would see in modern buildings, so round them off, give them a nice oldy worldy cobbled kind of feel. The funnest bit, it's the tiling. So, this was actually quite therapeutic. Cut out another um, size of card, similar to the roof size that you've already got in there, and then just chop it into irregular shaped, more or less squares or rectangles. But you want to keep them small. I think there's a temptation to do them big to save time, but they look shit. Do nice small ones that you can uh, cobble together. Um, it really is worth the effort. Just sit down in front of the TV, uh, watch a, a Netflix and whack your tiles down over the course of a series. Uh, sorry, not a series, just an episode. It won't take that long. Not unless you're really sorry. But get them nice and irregular. You can see here slanted tiles, badly fitting tiles, tiles that have slipped from their fittings. Do not be afraid to make this as cobbledy and you know ill-fitting as you like because it gives it all the character. Um, essentially, I think the majority of the character comes from the roof and you don't want to skimp on the time and the effort to build this out. The rest of the building can look fairly basic and boxy, providing you get the roof nice and rickety, in my opinion. I'm just going to add the, I don't know what you call them, the tile top bit. Um, you can see here, so I'm just going to whop that on, chop it into a few smaller chunks, and then um, build out the bit that you see here. Again, if you can get a nice little arch to it, uh, it's not really clear to see here, but there's a little curvature. There you go, you can see it there a little bit of curvature towards the, the top there. There you go. And um, that's going to give you, um, again, a nice rickety feel. And then just chop the, uh, the corners off to give it a, I don't know, a decorative look, I suppose. They wouldn't have paid that much attention to deco decoration in those days, but you've got far bigger things to worry about, but it just makes the building look a little bit more considered. Oh, you can see that bit of card there, I covered up the, um, the hole. Uh, where there was that old cellar door. So we're going to spend a bit of time sorting this out. You can see there that ring, the doorknob, um, is just a bit of tube that I've cut uh, very thinly to give like a, a knocker, a um, uh, yeah, I guess a knocker kind of effect. I've used that same tube for the chimney, so it's the same diameter. I think it's just like half a centimetre thick, maybe four millimetre thick tube, um, hollow obviously, and I've just thinly sliced it to give that circular ring and then just stuck it onto a, a square bit of plastic card. Also the um, hinges as well, put those on. Um, use you, uh, Google images to find examples of old doors and just emulate those really, they're very simple to do and add a lot of character. Um, I'll probably end up casting them as well, just to save myself a bit more time. You can see how rickety the other door is there. What I've done here is add a base to the building. So I've never been very good at bases. I've used a bit of MDF I had lying around from previous projects. MDF is a bit of a bitch to use. Um, I can't remember what I cut this with. Um, I don't think it was a tool. Um, it might have just been a knife, but it probably took quite a while. I would recommend using power tools for MDF because uh, it does. You know, so, oh no, I used a saw. Yeah, I used a saw. That's pretty quick uh, to get through it, like a hacksaw. Um, and just whacked it on some foam core. Don't just put it on card because it will warp. The, warping's the enemy in these sort of projects. You don't want anything bending unnecessarily. So I've got an old Empire shield here. You could use any shield uh, if you like, but I've um, used. Oh, I've forgotten what the name of this stuff is. Um, some you can find it on eBay. It's very quick setting microwavable, uh, re recastable kind of mould. You can just plug things in. I've used a bit of green stuff to replicate a shield because I didn't want to use up one of my precious shields for my Empire troops. So I just wanted to create like a, an emblem or a, a coat of arms to put on the side of the building to give it a bit of detail. You'll see later it didn't come out as well as I wanted. I think that's because I used far too much um, of the cork stuff that I uh, textured the walls with it covered up all the detail on the shield which is an obvious mistake that I won't make again. And add a little bit more detail after uh, gritting the floor as well so it's just fine grain sand poured onto there. You can see I've added the um, the shield, the emblem. Um, it's really starting to come together now. Um, the grit's just sand and then covered in a couple of layers of PVA with water just to seal it in there. You don't want sand coming away from your base after it's painted so make sure it's properly sealed in there. Here's my favourite little tub of gunge. Uh, many projects have come from this little tub. It's just a uh, takeaway box. I'm adding a bit of PVA 
some fine grit sand, a bit of water, and um, some filler. That's the other thing, so fine filler. You can see when you mix it all together, you get a nice lumpy, sort of thick paste. You don't want it too watery because it won't give the right effect and it won't cover any of the details that you're trying, or rather the errors that you're trying to cover up, so gaps in the um, in the model or mistakes that you've made could be very easily covered with this. So I'm trying to use a nice sort of scrubbing motion to create a bit of texture on the wall. Uh, this took a little bit longer than I would have liked. I think um, in the future I'm just going to use PVA and um, a fine filler. I'm not going to bother with the sand. It creates too much texture in my opinion. Uh, which looks nice when you have um, kind of highlighting and dry brushing it pulls out the texture a little bit but I just felt it took too much time because of the grittiness of the, the sand to sort of work into realistic um, uh, areas on the, on, the, on the wall there. So we can see the majority of it I've also covered the, um, uh, the foam in a bit of PVA and, uh, and water just to seal it in there and give it a bit more texture but without trying to cover up too much of the detail. At the top there I've added um, a bit of brickwork in the foam core and then just left it bare so it's going to look really nice when it's painted because it's going to look like the plaster or the render has kind of cracked and fallen away. And um, yeah this is kind of it in a pre-painted state, I didn't do much more to it from that point. Um, this is it painted up. I'm not the best painter in the world but I'm pleased with the way this came out so just make sure you weather everything really heavily. Um, so you want sort of dark uh, around the edges of the wood um, and then it highlights in the in the middle of the uh, the render, so it's a little bit brighter, and then darker at the edges where all the water and grit and grime would collect, and uh, where the sun would bleach the the uh, light um, the flatter surfaces. And then at the bottom there, you can see where the uh, the damp is rising up on the rock, um, which is very simple using a bit of dark green paint. That's pretty effective. It looks like I've overdone it there, but in real life, it's a lot more subtle. Nice chimney stack there as well. I did give everything a brown wash as well, just to give, bring out the detail. Lots of different textures and colours on the um, on the roof. Lots of different greys, blues, and um, dry brushing. Use your friend for that. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably give it a varnish, and it'll be ready for the table.